After the massive success of WandaVision, many of us were very excited to see where Katherine Hahn's Agatha Harkness would show up next because in some ways she was a scene stealer, especially after her catchy song. It's been Agatha all along. Which is now the title of her brand new spin-off series, which I've gotten to check out the first four episodes. This is my non-spoiler review. I will not be spoiling anything, but I'm here to tell you it's a little underwhelming. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new TV review. Today, we're discussing Agatha all along. The first four episodes, as I mentioned, in non-spoiler light, you are safe here. And of course, the first two episodes premiere right as you are watching this. They are up for you to watch. Again, not going to be talking spoilers there. Not like there's a lot to spoil, personally. But I also have seen the next two episodes as well. And in the end of the day, I do feel a little underwhelmed from Agatha. And, you know, to put some preference here, I, I wasn't that excited for Agatha all along. It just kind of feels like the WandaVision hype was years ago. Marvel has kind of been on decline for some people. I still enjoy Marvel for the most part. And WandaVision for me was like one of those series that like I wasn't excited for. I watched and I was like, wow, that that was amazing. I didn't love the finale, but I was just like overall like so invested. And it was really fun to go week to week and talk theories with so many fans, especially when like Ralph Boner's Quicksilver showed up and like that was like a massive thing for so many people. And for me, while a lot of those theories didn't come to fruition, there was still an emotional core, very intriguing level of mystery surrounding that show every single week that it kept bringing viewers back. And it was really fun to discuss that with so many people that are not super big into Marvel like I was at that time. And I think for me, Agatha, even though I didn't really pay attention to much of the marketing, I thought some of it looked cool. I like some of the cast. And of course, I love Katherine Hahn. I just couldn't get on board with this series, but I was still going into this very optimistic, hoping that it surprises me like WandaVision did and, of course, even Loki, which is personally for me my favorite MCU Disney Plus show so far. And I went into Agatha and I watched all four episodes and I kind of just came away going, it's OK, it's fine. I, I don't know if I can like fully say this is the must have series, the must watch series of the year. And even like for Marvel's sake, like I don't even know if this is like even the mid tier of them, especially when it comes down to the Disney plus shows, there's enough intrigue that I think some people will get latched on pretty immediately. But for me, I found it underwhelming. You don't know what Agatha all along is about. Well, it's about a spellbound Agatha Harkness who regains freedom. Thanks to a teen's help intrigued by his plea. She embarks on the witch's road trial to reclaim her power and discover the teen's motivations. This is of course created by Jack Schaefer, who is a massive part of creating WandaVision as well. And it stars the likes of Aubrey Plaza, Catherine Hahn, Patty LuPon, Joe Locke, and many, many more. As I said, I wasn't too excited for the series, but I went in optimistic. I came out kind of just going, eh, whatever about it. But what I like to talk about when we discuss film, TV, games, I like starting with my pros. So we are going to get into the pros of this series. And while maybe it might intrigue you, and I think if the series, the last four episodes at least, start to double down on those great aspects that I'm about to talk about, Possibly the series might turn around for me in the last four episodes. That's how I felt on Loki season two. Wasn't the biggest fan of the first four episodes, but then the last four really took me by storm and I ended up coming out positive on that entire season. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. And without further ado, let's dive into those pros, which the number one thing I want to talk about performances. Every person in here is like stellar. Uh, Joe Locke, I haven't really seen him in much, but I have enjoyed him in the things that I have seen him in. And I think Locke is actually really good in here. I like his charisma. I like his awkwardness to his character. And I'm really excited to see what comes of fruition of this character as well. For me, I think the three big standouts of this entire series, though, is first off, Patty LaPon, who is just amazing in this series like so good the second she's introduced you instantly lock into her and how she would be one of the witches a part of this journey as well as Aubrey Plaza who for me I've just always loved go back all the way to Parks and Recs I've adored her since then but for me what she's been really doing interestingly enough after that career move has been joining projects that are interesting 
in not your typical cup of tea, whether it's Emily the Criminal, Black Bear, and specifically My Old Ass, which comes out this week in theaters. I can't recommend that film enough. But she's always attached herself to interesting projects, which is another reason that I got excited for Agatha because I was excited to see what she was going to do. And while she's not had a huge presence from what I've seen so far, for what she has been in, I have loved and I think I cannot wait to see more of what they do with her character in this series and of course Catherine Hahn the star sh stealer of WandaVision is of course fantastic in this series I love the way that she plays Agatha and I like how the first episode really dives into this for people who watch the first episode right now you can see all these intriguing layers to the character and even the way that it kind of comes off and how we saw from WandaVision, how it played off certain TV motifs, the kind of same thing happens in this first episode. And I think the way that she shifts and changes her character is just delightful. And then from that first episode to the second episode, it's just a great little, not arc, I would say, but just nice turns of getting more of the Agatha that we journeyed into towards the end of WandaVision and getting more of that I think just spruces up what Han is able to do with this character and I think that also adds to the aesthetic of this series now WandaVision really much was doubled down on the aesthetic of so many different generations and so many different viewpoints of TV sitcoms and specifically how that tied into Wanda's past now this series is very much honing in different aspects of horror and as well as a crime noir in some ways, specifically from the first episode and what that was able to add in there. And I thought that was very fascinating to see how the first episode tied into that. And I think the aesthetic is one of the strongest aspects of the entire series for Agatha all along. And for me, it was one of the things that kept me intrigued with the series how it looks the horror tendencies that they have here which i think those connections and callbacks to of course wandavision and other easter eggs through other mediums are the things that will vastly make people excited for the series and i think those things are the things that made me go oh that's a cool connection oh that's a cool callback to this while still staying very singular to the Agatha All Along series. I think that also dives into The Witch's Road, which is actually one of my favorite things that I've ever seen Wanda go through within the comic book series, When we've, if you've ever read that series. It's a fascinating series. I highly recommend it. But for me, being able to see that now into live action, there is a little bit of nostalgia to that that makes me giddy and excited. And also, it's exciting to see them diving more into the mysticism, the magic of Marvel. You know, I know we've had Doctor Strange and I know we had WandaVision and certain aspects of that, but there is more of to that. And I think in the mysticism of it all, you're expecting to see a little bit more of horror, which we got a total jump into with Werewolf by Night. And I think it's nice to see that specifically in episode four, there's like one horror aspect that really didn't get under my skin, but I just found it so fascinating. And it reminded me of like, if you ever watched like video nasties back in the eighties, it kind of had a tone to that. Not saying it's gory, not saying it's over the top, but well, it is a little over the top, but it was exciting and fun. Weirdly enough, that's kind of the only pros that I really have to the series. And I think one of the things that you kind of heard me not mention is I didn't really talk about the story too much. And that's because I'm not really that intrigued or feel that momentum towards what's going on. It's one of those stories that's a journey with a bunch of different characters going down this witch's road and so many possibilities that they can kind of go on to that. And I think for me, there are aspects that I'm like, oh, what is this? What is that? And I think some people might come up with theories for that. But in the end of the day, anything that they've kind of dove into with theories so far, when it's been revealed, I thought it was pretty predictable. And there's a couple mysteries that are still surrounding certain characters that I kind of feel are a little bit predictable already. And I kind of know where they're going to go, which kind of sours some of the experience. And I think, again, maybe it turns out to be a completely left turn and it wasn't any of that that I was expecting. And that intrigues me if it does happen. But if it ends up being what I assumed it to be, I think it was pretty obvious from some of the marketing as well. I think that intrigue is one of the aspects that will hinder some people's viewpoints. And again, you might be just going to Agatha all along to have some fun, to have some entertainment. And there is fun and entertainment to be had here. I was entertained watching the series, but it's not the must watch or needed television that I think many people were hoping that this would be like WandaVision was. Specifically, the momentum of the series, which I think is one of the biggest aspects of what had WandaVision. And some people didn't really feel that, you know, the momentum was a little bit slow. And Agatha, while the momentum of it is moving along, I just never feel that there's a momentum on character arcs. 
character studies, certain things in their journey. Yeah, it might be pushing forward, but do I even care with what's going on? I think that's my biggest criticism is that there's nothing fully latching me onto the series. There's a couple things that pop up in episode four that I'm excited to see where it goes to, but other than that, I just feel like, Agatha all along is not gripping me like I really wish it was. And typically with Marvel series, it's usually the opposite. The first four episodes grip you instantly, and then the last four somewhat disappoint you. But this time, it's seeming to be the other way around. Which, in the end of the day, I'm hoping this is kind of a low-key season two situation where I didn't really like the first four episodes. I thought they were okay, and then boom, the last four episodes like won me over completely. That might be the aspect here, because there is so much greatness and so much fun to be had in Agatha all along. But I just don't think it's that great. And I think I found myself just a little bit underwhelmed from what was going on here. And I can't fully recommend Agatha All Along just yet. I think that's where I just feel that Agatha All Along has all the intrigue of WandaVision, but lacks the momentum needed to have me saying, wow, this is a must watch series. Yes, it's visually cool looking. It has some fun horror additions and it has an awesome Aubrey Plaza performance. And of course, Catherine Hahn is amazing as well. I think it's worth checking out for all those different reasons because you might find something here that you like more than I did. But so far, I'm a bit underwhelmed four episodes and I'm hoping the rest of the series kicks it into high gear and doubles down on the great aspects of the series. But I don't know if it actually will. Always hard reviewing series with what we just have because sometimes the back half can make or break a season making it stronger with a slower start and also lacking interest and also destroying whatever they had set up in the first four episodes there is some cool stuff in this series but i just don't see it latching on everyone and i think people who are coming off wandavision who loved that series might watch this and be like yeah there's fun to be had but I'm just, I'm not really feeling in it. And that's kind of how I feel with Agatha all along. So right now, I'm going to give this series a C-. minus. It's decent enough, but nothing that's mind-blowing and nothing making me go, yes, you have to watch it now. But check back at the end of the series where I'm going to give a more updated review on how I felt about the entire series. And I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. So thank you so much again for watching this. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Comment down below your guys' thoughts. Do you have any theories after watching the first two episodes after they premiered? We can talk some spoilers down below. But of course, until next time, stay classy. Mm -hmm.